having a good day. I'm a kick butt day. Doing good. Doing good. So I got loaded uh, in Spokane, headed north to Eastport and then to Creston. Unloaded there already. And now I'm headed over Kootenai Pass empty to our home office. I'm gonna get some new tires for the uh, truck. We got some new tri tires for the trailer last or over the weekend, but the truck was in the shop, different spots, so got some tires here that need to be replaced on the truck itself. It's like, hey, I'm going past the main office. Might as well do it here instead of going in on the weekend and bringing it to the tire shop. I'm loading at KIW in the morning, headed to Richmond. Okay, Alberta, when a Super B can keep up with you, going up Kootenai Pass, you know you're slow. Short passing lane, but you better let me by. Kind of in my lane here. There you go. All the way over. Got flashing lights aglore. Oh, maybe that's for the tow truck. Maybe they were flashing their lights saying, hey, it's me that needs uh, the tow truck. Looks like a new car. Well, they've got a spare tire on. I don't know. Let's watch, they called the tow truck just to change a tire and somebody else came along and changed the tire for them. It's people these days don't learn the skill of changing a tire. That is a skill that every driver should learn, period. I don't care who you are, you should learn. If you are physically able to change a tire, you should learn that skill. Anyone wants to learn, I'm willing to teach you. Let's change tires on your car. I'm up for that. That is something that every person should know how to do. Every driver should know how to do. Know where your spare tire is. Know how to change your spare tire. Inflate your spare tire. Check your spare tire at least once a year to make sure it still has tire pressure. No point in having a spare tire if it's flat as well. Now I did that this spring. I checked the spare tire pressures on my truck and trailer. So I asked uh, Customs going into the U.S. about using video cameras while going through Customs. And they're like, nope, they've got a law not allowed to use camera without the other person's permission uh, like well what if it's not facing them well this is a secure government facility so no cameras allowed at customs like okay cool i can respect that and then i went back into canada today on the way back I asked him the same question and he just goes, well, we would prefer you not face the camera. We would prefer our faces not to be on, on 
YouTube and on online. We would prefer not to have ourselves on camera. But legally, you are allowed to record through Canadian Customs. On the Canada side, it's considered a public place. On the U.S. side, it's considered a, a secure facility. So out of respect, I won't record on the Canadian side. But at least when I'm crossing into Canada, I don't have to unplug the dash cam. But crossing into the U.S., I'll have to always unplug the dash cam. I guess those dash cams are like built into the trucks that I don't even have access to the video. Those you wouldn't have to worry because, well, I don't have access to the video. I couldn't post it online or anything. Um, the company would have access to the video in case there was an accident. And I'm not where I wouldn't be concerned at all about having a company dash cam. Having said that, that dash cam must face out. I wouldn't even mind a dash cam, a second camera facing in, as long as the field of view of that camera was the driver only. Just the driver's seat here. I, you know, barely see the back of the seat type of thing. I want to turn far enough over so that I can be naked in the truck without being on the camera. I live here, I can be naked in the truck. Come on, don't judge. I gotta change, I have to change somewhere. Sometimes I close the, the window curtains and then use the whole truck as a home sweet home because the passenger seat turns. So it makes the space actually relatively spacey in here considering how small the space is. And then there's another curtain for the bunk that you could close. If there was a camera up front, you could close the curtain, but it, I'm a big, tall guy. It's hard to change with a back curtain closed. Yeah, I'd be okay with a camera facing me while I was driving. Making sure I'm not on my cell phone and stuff like that, right? In an accident, they can go see, was I distracted? But I would want the camera only to be facing the business the part, the, the, the driver's seat. That's the only part that the camera needs to be facing. I would have uh, some difficulty driving for a company that had a camera facing the whole, the whole bunk. And sure, the company say they only go use the footage if there's an incident, but how do I know that there's not anybody misusing that? How long is that video being saved for? Do they have remote access to it the whole time? Definitely privacy issues. Still a bit of snow up here. I'm 
Jess is at home doing tornado watches, helping out my uh, most loyal viewers. I don't know, I think I would love to visit Texas this time of year and I think I would enjoy the tornado season. But I would also want to enjoy some of the scenic stuff, you know, the safaris and the old, old ruins and stuff like that, the Alamo and things like that. I would love to go visit those. Ah, I guess we'll just have to go for two different vacations. One year go when it's dry season, dry warm season, another year when it's tornado season, another year during turn, uh, hurricane season mix it up we're uh, planning a vacation to Texas next summer maybe next spring slash summer somewhere in there no uh, no uh, solid plans yet but that is our next next road trip should be that one the debate is do I take more than two weeks off that way we'd be able to do a Michigan mich drive to Michigan see the in-laws there mom and pops and then drive all the way down to Texas see our loyal viewers there and then head back up maybe even see some more family on the way up through Oregon or something like that. I don't know, it'd be a huge trip, huge, huge road trip. But I want it to be a big road trip. If it's problem is with a Setco, if I take more than two weeks off, I lose my truck. So I'd have to clean everything out of the truck. I'll let someone else drive the truck. sense for the company doesn't want to be leasing a truck that sits there not making money two weeks is a very uh, reasonable compromise it sounds like the lease for this truck has been extended I told them I'm willing to run this truck another solid year so maybe they'll hold on to it for another year so Possibly no new truck in my future, and I am so okay with that. I don't want to be switch swapping all new stuff. I mean, it's got its hiccups, engine lights and stuff, but so do all the trucks. Every truck has mechanical issues. This truck's brand new trucks that sit in the shop long more than this truck does, so. I have uh, no real complaints. I like these trailers too. They're heavy. They're heavy trailers. I can't load as much as I would like to. And the company that builds these trailers, Raja, I guess they're bankrupt. I don't think they did a very good wheel alignment on these. There's always the same tires that wear down uneven. It's always the same t set of tires. It's like, okay, time to uh, rotate this tire the other direction, and sure enough, now the other side is wearing. So it does create some extra tire wear that is unnecessary. And it's always exactly the same area that the tires wear down fast. There's some axles I've replaced tires twice and uh, the other axle still on one set of tires, so. I 
And it's not all to do with uh, um, alignment, it's also turning radius. Like on my first trailer, it's got three axles. The center axle, the tires wear down very slow because when you turn, they don't slide sideways a lot. The front and rear axle, they leave black marks. Every single time I have to do a sharp corner, one of those yards that have really, really tight yards and I have to do a very tight corner, you leave these black, black, black lines on the, on the pavement and concrete. It's like, that's why those tires wear down so fast because you're sliding those tires sideways. That's why whenever possible you take the biggest, widest turn every single time. Whenever you have an option to take a wide turn, you take the corner as wide as you can because it will wear the tire down a lot slower. Those tight turns are extremely painful for tire wear. And yeah, I don't have to pay for the tires, but my company does. The more, the more money my company makes, the more my job is secure. just my call come whistling we'll let it be there we're almost to the brake check this guy must be loaded he's coming down real slow that is really slow there's there's no way he needs to come down that slow well it depends on his engine I got really good Jake brakes so I'm comparing it to my truck There's snow left up here. Not a lot. But some. They didn't get a lot of snow up here this winter, so. He should have his four rear flashers on. Got to stop for a brake check. Thanks for watching. We will uh, see you guys tomorrow. Be headed back to Vancouver. Have a great day. And remember, smile. Life is good.